Our patient is a 2004 Toyota Sienna. We'll be replacing the right front, that's the passenger front uh, wheel bearing. So on these vehicles, this wheel bearing is a press-in style wheel bearing. So we'll want to remove the knuckle from the vehicle. In order to do that, we'll want to remove the lower strut tower. There's two bolts there. We'll get this caliper out of the way. Um, the axle nut will come off and the tie rod. Lower ball joint will come out as well. Uh, and that should be it for this whole thing to separate. The um, wheel speed sensor too will, will come out. Uh, and it should, should separate for us and then we'll press it in or press the old one out, new one in. So it doesn't matter where you start. I'm gonna start by just removing this uh, axle nut. If you don't have power tools, what you can do is on the back of the tire, you can see the uh, little hubcap here. You can pop that out and then put the tire back on and then now you have access uh, through this hole to get a breaker bar onto the uh, axle nut. So our center nut is a 30 millimeter 12 point. The 12 point is important. It'll match exactly the shape of this nut. All right, so that moves in there. Uh, if it didn't, I'd put the nut back on. Maybe. And then hit it with a hammer. But that axle slides in there pretty, pretty easy, so we're good there. The next thing I'll do is uh, just pull the caliper off. Okay, so the top strut bolt is having trouble coming off. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this lower ball joint off and maybe that will give me some more room. We also still have the tie rod to take off. So I'll switch gears and, and go to those. Okay, push the axle through. Okay, so now it's separated. Let's work on getting this strut out. Okay, so got it apart. Um, solved the mystery. So that top one, why it was different is that it got a cam bolt installed um, for, for camber. So this is not normal. Um, you should not have one of these unless, unless the alignment shop said, hey, we need to put one of these in for the alignment. So now on the back side of the knuckle, there's a little dust shield. Now we wanna go ahead and just pop that out. Good. There we go. And then on the inside, there's a little clip. So we'll take our, um, our little pliers and squeeze that and pull it out. There we go. So these weren't working. So I just got a pair of curved needle nose uh, in my plier set. I'm sure a straight needle nose will probably work too. So now we want to separate the hub uh, from the bearing. So upside down again, we're just going to prop it on some uh, jack stands to keep it off the ground and then we're going to drive out that uh, hub. So I'm gonna use a socket that I don't use too often. It's a 29 millimeter. I'm just gonna put it in the center and knock it out. There we go. So the bearing race stays on the uh, old hub. You can cut that off and reuse uh, the old hub or for just a couple of dollars, you can buy a brand new hub, um, and not have to worry about it. It's just a little quicker, um, but you are paying for that convenience because you have to buy a new hub. But that's what I like to do. And then the new bearing will go in, get pressed in, and then the new hub pressed into the bearing. So from this point, you have a couple options. Um, if you have a bench press, you can use the bench press uh, to press out, press out the old bearing. 
at this point you could just take it to a local shop they'll press it out for you press in the new one and then you just put your knuckle back on um, what I'm going to be using is this tool kit here it's made for multiple different wheel bearings not sponsoring a specific brand this is just what I do um, out in the field so this is the front this is the back and the bearing will be pressed out towards the back so in the front it'll be pushed and then it'll come out the back so we'll take our right size fitting put it in the front and it fits perfectly in that uh, hole and then on this side we'll get the receiving cup like that with this little uh, step piece like that we'll take our nut put a washer on it that'll go, oops, that'll go through our cup like that through the bearing and out the other side we'll have another washer And then our Mamma Jamma uh, nut. We're gonna wanna lubricate this. It'll generate a lot of heat with friction. We'll just make sure we're lubed up. And then we'll do the same to this side. Back it off, lube it up. Take our impact, make sure we're lined up the best we can. Now as we impact on this side, it's gonna suck these two pieces together. This side can't move because it's on the knuckle, but this side can because it's on the wheel bearing and it'll just suck it together and pull that wheel bearing out. should be able to feel this side uh, sinking in. All right, that's it. So the wheel bearing's captured inside of this. There it is, old wheel bearing. So we want to match up our old wheel bearing with our new wheel bearing. Just make sure the outer and inner race line up and look about the same size. All right on your knuckle, go ahead and look inside where the bearing used to be. Um, if you need to clean it up with some sandpaper or a little bit of uh, like Scotch Brite or emery cloth, you know, go ahead and do that. This one looks pretty good. Um, so we'll just throw a little bit of lubricant on it. Um, just for ease of insertion, but really putting the new bearing in is the opposite of, of taking the old bearing out. So let me lube this up. I'll put a little lube on the outside of this and then we'll get it pressed in. Now on this particular bearing, it doesn't matter uh, which side goes in first. Some bearings do, but on this one it does not. Before I do that, the piece that we want for pressing it in we want it to be the same size as this hole. So that's a little too small. There we go. See how it fits just perfectly in there? So, so this is the one we want uh, to put it in. And see how it's got this little lip? So it'll go in like this. Okay. So we'll put that side in. We'll get our nut with the washer on it, put that through. And then on the other side, we'll take our, our fat stepped one, but we'll use the back against this here, like that. Washer, and then our nut.
And then we'll want to lube this up again. And just make sure before you start that you're as centered as possible and then we just tighten her up and then again it's gonna suck it together which this side can't go anywhere so the only thing that's gonna give is the wheel bearing inside the knuckle and you'll feel it stop we want to make sure that we can get that uh, ring in there and it looks good so that's the new bearing pressed in put our ring back seats in this little uh, slot looks good now we can press our uh, hub on and we'll go in this way so again we'll lube it up if you want to find one that'll fit over that yeah, so this will work that'll work close enough Same one back in because we don't want that inner race to pop out, so we want to make sure that it's held in place. So that'll go in, this will go in, put our washer on, and then our nut. Here it goes in straight, lube it, tighten it down. Okay, and you can feel it bottom out and that's as far as it goes and then give it a spin. Make sure it's not hitting on anything, but it shouldn't. So now we're ready to put the knuckle back on the vehicle. Before we put this on the vehicle, we'll put our dust uh, boot back in and just make sure that this little hole goes in your hole for your wheel speed sensor. All right. Put our lower ball joint back on first. Now these are lock nuts. Because they've been used once, if we're going to use them again, uh, then we'll have to just put a little Loctite on it. Oh, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. Okay, so I just put the lower ball joint back on. I put the uh, axle through and just put a couple um, threads on with the nut. Now I'm putting the strut tower back on. So I'm just going to give you all the torque specs uh, right now. The ball joint is 90 foot-pounds on those. The center nut here is 217 foot-pounds. The strut uh, bolts are 155 foot-pounds. The tie rod is uh, 36 foot-pounds. So I'm just going to go ahead and do all that real quick. Um, and then we'll put our brake caliper on last. Now we'll torque this on the ground here uh, to its proper uh, torque and then we'll take a little uh, chisel or a little punch and um, punch that nut into that little groove and that locks it from backing itself out. 
So again, with the uh, tie rod, this is a used lock nut, so we'll go ahead and just put a little um, Loctite on it. All right, now we can put the rotor on. And I'm gonna turn the wheel and then we can get that side torqued. Put our brake stuff back on. I'm gonna re-straighten out the wheel, put the tire on, uh, lower it, and then we can torque our center nut. All right, so now we'll take a just a little punch and uh, knock that in. All right, so we are done. Just take it for a test drive. Make sure uh, if you had a noise that the noise is gone. Uh, if you had some looseness in the wheel bearing, you can go ahead and um, you know once the tire's back on, give it a shake to see that looseness is gone. Uh, I think that's. Just about it, just double check, make sure everything's tight and torqued, and you're good to go. Well, there you go. That's how you can replace a press-in style wheel bearing on your Toyota Sienna. Not too complicated if you have uh, the right tool to do it. This tool that I used is designed to press in, press out wheel bearings while the knuckle is still on the vehicle. So you just have to be able to remove uh, the axle uh, just out of the way enough, and then you can put that tool in and, and do it all while that knuckle is still on the vehicle. I took this off. One, it's just ease of access when you have it off, and then two, it's just better filming so you can see the process of using a tool like that. All right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe. See you on the next one.